Okay, referring back to our, our checklist, I went ahead and I interjected this one. I think now's a good time to do it. So we've, we're working our way through. We've installed, using YAS, we've installed uh, DNS and, and uh, using the wizard. And what I'd like to do now is show you how to create the delegation. We'll go over to DC1. Needs to be, the delegation needs to be done on whatever server is hosting the read write copy of the parent. And so for us, that's DC1. Now we're talking internal DNS. If we needed split brain, it, uh, using split brain DNS, if we needed a child on the internet, then that would be on a different server. This is just internally. This is so that when uh, a server co contacts DC1, excuse me, when, let's say that Windows 10 goes to resolve bogus.dev.ak.bobstaco.com, it's gonna reference DC1. DC1 will say, well, uh, I don't have a zone for bogus. I have a zone for ak.bobstaco.com, but not bogus. Uh, but I do have a delegation, and so then it would it would query the the delegated server LNX to provide name resolution for for the child zone or domain of dev.bobstaco.com. So let's let's go ahead and do that. So to do a delegation, we just go to the parent zone. We go to new delegation. So wizard. We just need to type in the first part. You can see here it filled in the rest of it, so dev. And then we need to, to tell it, actually what it asks for is it asks for a fully qualified domain name. And, and so you, you would wanna have then these records in the primary or in the parent domain. That, that's the best practice. To if, uh, so we're delegating to LNX but when you go to delegate, you, you use a name instead of an IP address and the name then resolves. So that's why it's important that we have records in the parent domain. We have records in ak.bobsaco.com for LNX. Okay, and then that's it. I'm gonna go ahead while I'm here and, and clear the cache. To, to see the cache, we need to turn on the advanced view. Let me just show you, first of all, you right click here. Oh, there it is, it is there. Okay, but if we did want to view the cache, that's right. If we wanted to view it, then you got to turn on advanced view and then you can come in here and look and you can see what names have been resolved. Okay, so that's it, that's the delegation. If we need to change it, then we come here to fix it. So this is similar to what what I did for each of you when I when you forwarded to me your your records for your Azure zone, uh, then then I uh, I did a delegation in um, in our Cloudflare hosted Bob'sTaco.com. I created a delegation for each of you. All right. Well, while we're here, so we're on on uh, on DC one. Come back to the PDF here. So what we want to do is we want to to test. DNS using NSLOOKUP, that's our, our, our tool. There's another tool called DIG. That's also an option. I think DIG is a newer tool, but we want to, so we, we've installed DNS here. And so we want to test here. That's one place, test on, on local hosts. And then we want to pick either either DC1 or server one. I'll, I'll, I've got DC1 already open, so I'll test from DC1. And then I chose Win11. Uh, and, and so Win, Win 11 isn't in my drawing, but I'm going to test from Win 11. And what we want to do then is we want to use NS Lookup, and we want to set the server to to LNX, and then we want to start asking it questions. We want to ask it about local knowledge uh, for you know for ak.bobstaco.com. We want to ask it for the child domain dev for knowledge of that. We want to ask it can it also is it useful to resolve internet names? So those are our, our three areas of testing. And then based upon the results, determines what level of troubleshooting we need to do. So I, I said we start on DC1, but the truth is we should really start on LNX first. We should start where, where, we, uh, where we install DNS. So I'm gonna open an NS lookup and I'm gonna ask it then for, for DC1. I want you to notice here that 
it is coming out of, this is coming from LNX. In other words, it's using loopback. Okay, now another way to verify that would be to use the server value. We could say server 172.18.18.100. Of course, again, those are my values. And then we could ask it, you know, tell us about DC1. And it knows about DC1. Tell us about IPv6. Whoop google.com okay was able to resolve all that tell us about you know you and again i i'm a creature of habit and so this is just a site that i use all the time so tell us about those things tell us about pf1 okay so, uh, so uh, that that test was 100 percent successful it was able to oh we didn't ask one more tell us about bogus dot dev dot ak dot bobs taco.com Okay, and it was successful. So that our tests were 100% successful on LNX testing DNS. We've proven that the service is running, that the firewall is open at least for localhost for the 127 address. Actually also, well, we said 172.18.18.100, but really I don't think that's a, a fair evaluation or validation of the firewall. I would still consider this testing using localhost. But we verify that the DNS server itself is healthy that the zone we created for dev uh, is, is uh, alive and well, and it was able to resolve our test record that we put in there. It's also using forwarders. That's, that's the only way that it could know about PF1 and DC1 and, and those hosts that we asked it for. All right, let's just ask it for server one. The only way that it can know about those is by using its forwarder function and forwarding over to DC1. Okay, so try to think that through. Uh, think about how else could it know? There's there's no other way it could know. So that that's good. So what we're going to do now is we'll move over to to uh, DC1 and test from there. Okay, so I'm over on my DC1. I think you can see that here. And if I just do an NS lookup, it's going to use the configured DNS for DC1, which is itself. So what I need to do is I need to switch and say server LNX. And again, you could also use the IP address. Okay, so it switched over. It switched over to LNX. And now I can ask it for, okay. Okay, query refused. All right. Now, we're not going to panic at this point. Uh, I think I've already done the, enough panicking for all of us. I'm just kidding. This was, um, I've been troubleshooting this, which is part of what we do, right? I've been troubleshooting this, and I, I believe we've got some solutions and, and learning. We're always learning, uh, so I, I was expecting this. Last uh, last year when we taught uh, DNS on Linux, uh, there was another issue that needed to be troubleshot. But anyways, let's just keep going and see what works and what doesn't work. So query refused for asking LNX to resolve onto the Internet. Let's ask LNX about, about DC1. Okay, query refused. Let's ask it about, let's give it a fully qualified domain name for DC1, dc1.ak.bobstaco.com. Query refused. Let's ask it about bogus.dev.ak.bobstaco.com. Okay, query accepted. All right, so what we're seeing here, let's, let's just kind of get our troubleshooting notes lined up here. What we're seeing is that DNS, we're able to communicate with DNS and we're able to, it's, it's, uh, it's configured such that it will answer for records within its own database, within its own zone. So the only zone that it, it hosts is dev.ak.bobsaco.com. And it was able to reply to us. I wouldn't say able, it, it chose to. This, is a, this query refused means that the DNS server running on, on LNX is, is uh, not, not configured to allow requests from the outside. That makes sense? So that's the only record it resolved. It couldn't resolve anything uh, internally. It couldn't resolve anything to the internet. Um, I guess it could resolve one thing internally, and that was records from dev.ak.bobstaco.com. Let's switch over to, to uh, Windows 11 and, and do the same test. Okay, so we're over here on, on Windows 11. And again, it, uh, Windows 11 and Windows 10 currently even though they're on DevNet, they're set up to use DC1 
as their DNS server. So I'm going to switch servers. I'm going to say switch to LNX. That's what the server command space and then the name of the DNS server you wish to query. Okay, it did that just fine. And I'm going to ask it again. I'm going to ask it for dc1.ak.bobstaco.com. Okay, query refused. Um, ftp.nobel.com. To make a long story short here, what we're going to see is that it's going to have the same behavior as DC1. And so let me ask it for bogus.dev.ak.bobstaco.com. Did I spell that right? I did. Okay. So same results. Again, query refused. The server received the request, but determined that, that it was an unauthorized request, and so it refused it. So we're at 11 minutes on this video, so I'll wrap this one up. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to get into some troubleshooting. And this is the, the heart and soul of Linux is, is working from the command line. And we're going to bounce between the GUI and the command line. And it's going to take a little thought on your part, a little patience. And um, so don't, don't uh, approach the next uh, however many videos it takes for us to do good, a good thorough job of explaining how DNS works and how to troubleshoot it. Don't... Uh, approach that uh, like let's just quick get it done kind of thing you're going to need to give some thought and and uh, invest some time into understanding what we're talking about but the good thing is is that everything that i'll be showing you is the heart and soul of linux so we're going to be using the um, the name d.conf file that's the configuration file for for dns but the principle of of editing and, and working with text files is is how linux is is managed. It's, that's where it really, really, uh, really happens. You know, like in Windows, the registry is the heart of Windows. Okay, Linux doesn't have a registry. Linux has configuration files. There are lots and lots of them, and they are just text files. But when, when the Linux kernel loads and then it goes to load its different modules that you've configured, like in our case, we've added the DNS or, or daemon, it reads the configuration file for that to determine how to how to configure it, how to set it up, and how it should run. When we go into YAS and we get the graphical tool, that's for convenience. But that is a layer removed from the heart of what's actually going on. And what we're going to find, or what I found in troubleshooting this, is that we need to go right to the heart of Linux, and that's to work with the configuration file for DNS, which, again, the name of it's called, it's in the Etsy directory, it's called named for the D is uh, uh, for daemon, uh, name is for name service. So all of these configuration files that end in a D, they're for a daemon. So this one is named d.conf, and um, we're going to do some work there. So I'll see you in the next video.